Hi guys, what's up? It's Will and John back there, Mimi Huddles here once again. Um, as we're going into our second card of the week, we're recording this literally pretty much just after our um, Qatar versus EGA predictions because we both work full time, we both got kids, we both got uh, other things on, so it's probably the best time to just get this out here. Just a forewarning from myself, John's maybe did a little bit more than I have. I've, I've literally only watched maybe two or three fights in this card, so there's some spots in here I'm not overly sure about. I haven't really looked into, and like I say, that's just, it's what happens. With everything being condensed, we can't have eyes on everything. I, I can't watch kind of fights 24 hours a day as much as I would like to. So And the fight's changing, bro, as well yeah, all the time. It's just it's hard work. work. The main event was in jeopardy at one point, and so it's, it's like everything's mm. kind of, Weird stuff's going on at the minute. Before we get into the breakdowns here, guys, we'll just uh, hit that subscribe button. The channel's slowly growing, uh, getting new subscribers all the time. Hit that bell to be notified when our videos hit YouTube, John's interviews hit YouTube, whatever it may be. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you can. Drop a comment, any questions you have. Um, just tell us your, your favourite plays of the week, whatever it may be. Hit the drop down box and we'll get back to you as soon as we can in that. So, I think without further ado, I think we're just going to jump straight into this card because we don't want to be here all night. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just going off what we see here. And this is the fight I've literally, I know I've watched one Mal Malcolm Gordon fight and I've seen zero of Amir Albazi. So, it's Malcolm Gordon against Amir Albazi. Um, Joy, I think you've probably seen a little bit more than I have in this one. So, I'll let you lead yeah. off with that. I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to meet Al Bowser here. I've, I'm surprised he got signed up, but I think it's because of the position globally where he is. I think that's maybe why they signed him up. Um, he fought Jose Aldo on Brave, just to give you guys a heads up, and uh, if, it's probably the most recognisable fight that he had. Uh, but his style is not ideal for Malcolm in this one. Malcolm, for me, is he's been stopped a few times as well in his career, Malcolm, like I think three times by, with strikes. He takes... He puts, it's weird, he puts his hands up to stop strikes, but keeps his head, he puts his chin down and kind of stays still while people throw their combination and then he gets going himself. But instead of maybe moving at an angle or trying to throw a counter, he just, for me, it's horrible. I hate watching it. In fact, I didn't enjoy watching Mal, uh, Malcolm. I, I want, he's going to get, he's going to get eaten up in this division. Um, I think I think Amir should win this fight because Amir is very good at being on the back foot and moving away, and because he, he comes in, because what he'll do is he'll time it for when you're stepping to him to throw the combination, then to circle off. So I think Amir here should be able to land the strikes. He's not overly powerful, Amir, uh, but he's got he, Amir really wants to fight on the ground. That's where he likes to go. He likes to get submissions if he can. He's not got a bad submission game. He's got a good, he's good with the choking attempts, uh, but I think he might not even get that. I think he might actually just worry Malcolm because you think he'll, I think he'll just land more on Malcolm and maybe get the decision or the stoppage because Malcolm's been stopped like I say a few times and if you watch it he just puts his hands up and he just takes the punches man I'm not overly confident on him at all in any in any facet yeah like I said there's only one fight I've watched out of Malcolm Gordon and that is the Sherbatov fight where he won via submission but even just looking through his record he looks like a guy that is very dominant once he gets it to the ground and he's got some skills here to maybe to finish the fight. I've seen zero of Albazi and he's a guy I will look into once I get time. You, you were saying that he fought Josie mm -hmm. Torres, which is obviously a, a, a good good opponent to have. But like I say, without really looking into either guy, I, I probably really shouldn't give a pick here. But I'll maybe... I'm sure I can maybe put a comment in the section once I kind of look through, through more of this. I'll take Malcolm Gordon, but like I say, Without watching much of any guy, it's hard to really make a prediction. But I, I know a little bit more about Gordon than when I do Albazi, so I'll take him in that spot there. Um, heavyweight Sergey Spivak against Carlos Felipe. We know a little bit about Spivak. He's not super high level. He was kind of bossed around a little bit by um, uh, Marcin Tabura last time. Mm -hmm. He got taken down and really he didn't have anything off his back. But uh, I actually went looking for Carlos Felipe fights today and could not find a single one. I can send you yeah. links, mate. 
Yeah, so I'll maybe have to get that from you. I, I don't know. I Shoot think... out Brazil on uh, UFC Fight Pass. Right, okay. So, I, I, you know what? I never even thought to look at UFC Fight Pass. Because yeah. when you have guys like kind of 8 and 0 and so on, you're, you're thinking maybe YouTube might have a couple of these dark matches. There's one on there. I'll, sh- I'll send you talk, mate, while I find the link and I'll send it to you, bro. Yeah, it's fine. So, like I say, he, he's a, a kind of meddling heavyweight, 6 foot, 245. Uh, most of his wins are via a TKO. Spivak I know a little bit more about, so it's kind of, again, I've seen nothing of this Carlos Felipe guy, so it's hard to really, for me to give a pick, so I, like I say, what I will do is when I watch more of these fights, I'll, I will put a comment in the section on uh, the MMA Huddles page, and I, I'll give you my kind of official predictions through that, but I know that Spivak, I mean, he came out there and he kind of shut down Tai Tui Vasa and uh, got himself a, a big win as a massive underdog in that spot as well there. Yeah. Um, showed some really decent fight against Tabura, but eventually you see him where his kind of path lies. If he gets put on his back, he's like a totally he's not going to get off his back there. So I'll take Spivak back because, like I say, I know a little bit more. But upon watching some fights, I may actually go the other way with Felipe. So uh, Spivak for me, but like I say, it's hard to tell at the minute. Yeah, Spivak looked okay in, on the feet against. Tybura, which surprised me, because he did look, he, he threw more combinations, it feels like he's slowly getting a bit more confidence in the UFC, it, it's, it's strange, but the Carlos Felipe actually got popped by, uh, he was, when he signed to the UFC, he was meant to fight and got popped, and then, so he's been out for a while, exactly, yeah, he's not fought for like over two years, you see, because he got popped, he had a boxing exhibition bout, uh, technically striking though, whoo, you know, He's not a good technical striker. He just throws heavy. A little bit of a chubster. Bit of a ga- bit cocky with, the, with his mouth. He's all about... Stri- he just wants to throw hands. He went... Um, it was uh, Maya in a, dis- in a heavyweight bout on Shuto. You'll find on UFC 5 Pass. Went decision there. Obviously, cardio's not the greatest. He wasn't overly impressive. I think Sergey here, for me... I- I'm going Sergey because... He just needs to use his combo. He's a combo sambo uh, champ. He's a he's a, he's absolute savage in that side of things. He seems like a bit tentative when he's fighting, but I think if he uses his grappling aspect here, because he has got good takedowns, Sergey, I think he should be able should try to get Carlos to the ground here and just get on top of him and use it use the grappling aspect because he did look good against um, Tui Vasset when he was on top. When he's on top of someone, he's good on he's good at gra- he's got good at ground and pound, cut him up, and he's got a submission side of things on his back. It was horrible watching it, wasn't it? He just looked lost. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Sergey here. I think he should be able to get the win over Carlos. I think Carlos is uh, especially being out for so long, it's a it's a big kind of red flag too. Mm-hmm. This next fight is an absolute fire matchup. This is one that oh. when they announced this, I was like, I'm gonna watch both these guys and uh Davi Hamos against Ar- Armand Sarukian. I mean, geez, almighty, what a great, great fight this is. Um, how do you see that one going down? Man, I am absolutely... I was torn a little bit, you see, because I thought Armin, well, one, well, he's very good at going for takedowns. He's got the grab, but the last thing you want to do is go to the ground with Davi Ramos. Whether yeah. Davi's on top or on bottom, no, I wouldn't want any of that. But then again, when you see Armin on the feet thrown and striking, he's actually not a bad technical striker either. Um, Ramos is a bit of a counter guy, so he'll want to like just wait for you to come in to then throw his strikes to maybe go to the grappling aspect. Um, it's a, it's a hard one to call because I thought if you looked at the the debut for Armin, bless him, like what a hot, what a fight, Islam Makachev, like god damn it, what a day, but that was a fun fight. He did very well in the grappling aspect as we we saw he did great scrambles reversals, so. Davy Ramos maybe is going to have a bit of a tough time getting the fight to the ground. He might have a bit of a difficult time grappling with him to keep him down, to pin it down and get the win, win here. Because um, Armin might be able to reverse it, get it back up to the feet. Um, gosh, I'm going to go with Armin because I just found that he's actually got really good conditioning. He's got solid 15 minutes of work ethic and he will fight for your money. He's a dogged kind of guy. Um, like... Oh, man, Davy Ramos is an absolute ninja with the grappling aspect. I think if Armin is going to go for takedowns, that's my worry. Maybe Ramos might be able to get this slip in like a guillotine choke or something like that. Uh, but I think maybe the height and reach might play a part in this side of things because I think Armin should have a bit of distance, a bit of an advantage on this fight. So I, I'm going to go with Armin. Um, but Davy could get anything in this fight. It's going to be sick. Yeah, it's like... Um... 
Davy Hamos is just like a, a guy you have to be super careful with because he's got some defining skill sets that could take you out at any point. I think he's got some big power. I think he's got obviously jiu-jitsu, which is world-renowned, well-known. But I, from the minute I clapped my eyes on Aaron Saruki and I thought, this guy is a ranked a ranked fighter. Um, and he was thrown to the wolves against Islam Makachev. And he didn't look out of... Well, he, 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 you could tell he wasn't on the level of someone like Islam yet. Mm. But you've seen spots and, and things that he was doing. I thought, this kid can be in a spot like that with Makachev, be a top 15 guy. Um, and then he came against Olivier Auburn, may I say, where um, I, I still think he looked, I don't want to say green, but I still I still don't think he fought his full potential there. I thought his striking looked decent. He got his takedowns for the most part, a couple of them in that fight. Um, but like I say, he, he's... He got down Makachev as well. Makachev's not a guy that is known for being taken down easily. And he managed to get him down there and, and hold him there for a little bit, not too long. And then he popped back to his feet. Um, but I'm interested to see what Ramos does here because obviously I think that with the jiu-jitsu skills that he's got, if he, if he can get the fight to the ground, he's got an advantage to get people out of there. But in saying that, that people like Austin Hubbard, he got him down three times, and I was saying and before that fight, I was like, if he doesn't get him down, if he gets him down, he will get him out here quick, and he survived. Then he kind of got ran over striking-wise against Islam Makachev, who's, but he's beat both of these guys here. Um, but I'm such a, much the mark for, for, for Saruk, and I think he's going to be a such a good, good fighter that I think that he's just going to edge a very competitive decision, I think a 29-28 decision here, like the fact he's been an American team, he's been training with really super high quality guys, there's a lot of Russian guys that are making their way to American top team now, which is interesting um, so I've got Armin Saruki and I'm going to take him via 29-28 decision in that spot there next up we've got the Pikey Brett Johns, old Brett's back against uh, Montel Jackson thoroughly looking forward to this fight honestly, I think that um, Probably at the start of the year, the one guy that I was looking forward to seeing how 2020 was going to go was Montel Jackson because I think this guy has got some defining um, qualities about his fight, kind of fight, fighting style that uh, are going to take him a long way in the UFC specifically because he's massive. He's absolutely huge for the division uh, and he's got a massive, massive reach as well. Southpaw, they were saying that the guy's got the biggest hands, I think, in the UFC. He likes to kind of hand fight a little bit where he'll grab the hands and try to do stuff with you. Um, but he's still green. He's still not been in the sport that long. Um, yeah, because Brett's came through Cage Warriors. He won himself a belt. Uh, he moved himself over at the UFC. And, I mean, he's fought good colour opposition from the get-go. I mean, Quang Ho Quack, which the guy that nobody really speaks about anymore, but he was a kind of known guy coming in there from Asia. And he, Brett kind of ran all over him with his wrestling. Then he had, obviously, the calf slicer. Uh, then he then he got massive step ups against Aljo where he, he he I don't want to say he was not competitive in the fight but he was just outgunned in the fight um, with Aljo's style got taken down a couple of times he took down Aljo then he got Pedro Munoz where he kind of got kind of feasted upon a little bit but he stayed competitive he stayed like he showed his heart and his grit and his determination to stay in there even though he was injured very badly then he came back after a pretty good amount of time off and and I was surprised he was an underdog against Tony Gravely I, I just did not see that so I bet Brett pretty handily in that spot there um, I thought he was just a little bit more well versed in every aspect um, of the fight and it kind of showed out to be like that but then you've got someone like Montel Jackson who I mean he's coming off 11 takedowns he's not going to do that against Brett here because Brett's too crafty um, as a fighter to, to let that happen on the feet, I think he obviously has to get inside the reach of someone like Montel Jackson. Montel is just a guy that I think is he's got a very high ceiling in the sport and he's not even been in the sport that long. So I'm going to pick Brett Jones. I think the experience of being in bigger fights, being in championship fights in Europe and America is um, going to play in its advantage. Here. But I think it's going to be close. Montel, the thing is with Montel as well, he's so long that he's he, he probably one of these guys that's got, kind of got really big power with his length and his levers and just how, how long he can throw his shots out there. So I'm going to take Brett Johns as a pretty sizable underdog here um, to get the a big win over a guy I think has got a bright future in Montel Jackson. Yeah, uh, 
Brett did well to come back against Gravely and just even he said it in, in the interview I did with him, uh, which again, if I'm not lazy enough, there'll be a little eye up there that you can click on to watch. He said he felt flat and that he didn't even feel it was a good performance. Um, he's went kind of full time at Shaw MMA, training with uh, Jack Shaw and obviously Shakey's there, and you know you got Jack Marshman as well, and there's a, there's a plethora of guys who aren't in the UFC yet, which you know like for example Obin Elliott, who's a guy who potentially could be in the UFC in a couple of years. He's a yeah. exciting young prospect outside of it. Uh, keep an eye out for him on Cage Warriors. Uh, you know, there's guys like that they're training with who we don't you don't see on the UFC side of things. Um, Brett's got the judo background. His dad is a, a high, was was at a very very high level judoka, and uh, he learned a lot there, Brett. So that's why Brett's got good balance and not bad takedowns himself. And with Jack Shaw, the wrestling, the the pair of them complement each other. I think with Montel, he just has to get the foot get within that four four inch range distance uh, that. Montel has. Uh, Brett's obviously improved in, in ways in that Gravely fight, but I think here with Montel, if, if I'm Montel Jackson, I want to keep Brett away. I want to keep him at distance. I want to use my jabs and my straights, and I don't want none of that Brett Johns fire that he's going to come at with me with the pressure. Because that's one thing Brett does. He just comes forward with a lot of pressure, and he's he's actually not got bad head movement or decent hands. But if you look back, he has for a similar kind of body to Montel Jackson and Wally Watson when he fought in Titan FC. Sim so he's, it's not a new thing. Obviously, we've talked about Aljamain Sterling as well. Aljamain Sterling's physique is a, a, a kind of long body, you know, just long limbs. So it's not something Brett's new to. I think, obviously, Montel doesn't fight anything like Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain has got his own little different style, and it works well for him. Uh, so I'm going with Brett Johns as well, I think, partly experience. And I think Brett's actually solid grappling. You know, he's... Brett's got good grappling game. When he gets on top, he's good. He's good in that field as well. So, I'm going to go with uh, Brett Johns. I think he, he he could get the could get a nice solid submission win here. So moving on, we've got the return of Irish Joe Duffy against um, the Spanish submission ways and uh, and Joel Alvarez. How do you see that one going down? Joe Duffy back. I know after getting absolutely outclassed by Mark Diacasey, yeah. it was it was. Absolutely bananas. And I kind of sit here and question Joe Duffy. I was questioning Joe Duffy before it as well. But, you know, you kind of watch him and you think, he's he's a, he's a natural-born fighter. He's very high level, but he just doesn't turn up to show it. It's so weird when you watch him fight. He's so placid and laid back. And you don't see the, the, the fight. This, to me, if he doesn't win this... I'm going to be absolutely flabbergasted. He should win this. A fight like this, any other day of the week, you'd think, Joe Duffy, easy. But I am a bit skeptical, skeptical sorry, Joe Duffy. I'm a little bit, where is he? Well, knowing that leg kicks are there for, to land on him. Oh, no. We jump in here again. Skype's playing up. Here we go. There you go, Will. You're back. Super. Whew. Thought you'd gone there for a minute. Bloody internet's playing up. Sorry, folks. Um... Yeah, poor connection, my arse. Uh, yeah, for me, I was a bit worried about um, Joe Duffy, and especially, he's what, 32, 33 now, and I think, where's he, where is he in this, where is he in this lightweight division? You know, he's, he can't live off the victory that he had against Conor McGregor nowadays. It's dead in the water, that kind of talk. There's no point in even spitting it out anymore. It's a, it's a pointless conversation. Joel Alvarez, I don't think he's anything to write home about. He's not too bad. He's a long-range fighter. He's, he's like the bottom of the barrel lightweights. If the UFC ever go to Spain, he's ideal for that. But pff, I don't see much about his game that should trouble Brett, uh, Joe, uh, sorry, Joe Duffy. I think Duffy should have a better boxing, better hands to kind of come back and counter Joel uh, Alvarez with. Joel won't, 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 sorry, won't want to go to the ground with Joe Duffy because Joe Duffy has got solid submission games in him. He's got really good grappling aspect, which we saw in Glasgow when he got an, a, f a beautiful submission win. Um, yeah, he beat Daniel Belgerado, was it pronounced? I think it was. Which is nothing to write home about. Um, yeah, got absolutely picked apart by Demir. Uh, I, do, I just think Joe Duffy should win this, but if he doesn't, man, you've got to look at cutting Joe Duffy, haven't you? Because mm. this is, this, if you can't win this, I'll be shocked. 
Yeah, that whole beating Conor McGregor really didn't kind of work out for him in the, in the kind of end up because he obviously went to the UFC, blast through two guys in the first round, and then you get matched up with Dustin Poirier. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's not a kind of good look. But in fair of that, I thought he was competitive against Dustin Poirier, even though he was taken down and kind of dominated a little bit. But uh, he has got skills mm. that will wipe out opposition like Joel Alvarez because he's a good good boxing he can throw high kicks up there as well so I would be surprised if Alvarez comes out here I mean Alvarez is a guy that's got 14 of his 16 wins via submission so you know where he wants to keep this fight and like you've seen you've seen Ismagulov who really picks his shots well and it's not super dangerous with his shots but Duffy has the firepower I think to get him away and when he makes a step up he just generally loses he beats guys like Madadi was on his way out mm-hmm. Mitch Clark retired Ivan George was never that good and Jake Lindsay was never that good mm-hmm. he should kind of handle this accordingly. When you're facing your James Vicks, who I thought he started all right in that fight, but eventually just got caught. Mm. And then Ian Casey, I thought, looked an absolute monster in that fight. Yeah. I watched an interview with Al McGrath, who's a, a good buddy of ours, um, and he was talking about retirement and stuff, and that you never like hearing that. He should come through this one, but if you, if you match him up with someone who's fairly decent next, I think you can fade Joe Duffy, but I've got him to win via knockout in this one here. Moving on, catchweight bout Grant Dawson against Nad Naramani. Um, really interesting fight for me. I think that Grant Dawson's come into the UFC and he's just kind of ran through his opponents and got some missions uh, outside the Julian Arosa one. And um, the guy's got a serious gas tank. He's got a lot of things I think he still needs to improve on. But I think Nad Naramani's live in this fight. I think that... If I uh, can, I think that that needs a lot of work. Someone like James Krause will be doing a lot of work with him and something like that. But um, I just think that this, if he can't establish takedowns, and Nad Aramani is a guy who has got, I know he's from the UK, and we UK guys really can't wrestle, and we've heard all that jazz for years. But he's actually fairly decent in that sport. He's actually a fairly well-rounded uh, fighter with really decent cardio. So, like I say, he's not, uh, I don't want to say he's ever going to be a top 20, top 30 guy, but what he is, is he's very, very hard and he's very tough and he's hard to get out of there. And um, this, in my opinion, is a, a tough fight for Dawson. I think that, obviously, he's got that kind of skill set. He can come out and run through people and take people down and, and manage to get into positions there, but I just don't think it's going to be as easy in this fight as it's been in previous fights against Tre- uh, Trezano and Derek Minner. Um, I think off the top of my head I think Nad is a black belt BGJ black belt as well so um, yeah uh, the, the, the fights that you've kind of seen I watched the Mike Grundy fight probably last week I think it was and he got taken down he popped back to his feet very 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 quickly as well so I think in line in this one here I think Nad Naraman is more of a live fighter than the, the odds suggest but Grant Dawson has a lot to kind of like, but he's got a lot to also improve on. And I think if he improves on that, he's going to be a dangerous fighter going forward. So I'm going to take a little shot in Nad Naramani in this spot here to kind of maybe get a decision against him. But I do think it's also a tough fight for him. But I'll I'll take a shot in Nad Naramani in this spot. Yeah, Nad could absolutely use a wrestling defense to kind of uh, nullify Grant if he Grant's trying to grapple with him and get into the ground. You know, Nad could absolutely stop that that happening. And it's a it's a it's a fight on the feet. And I think one of the things that um, Grundy got Nad with was the fact that Grundy was happy to use his hands. He was happy to stand, and it kind of put Nad off a bit because I think Nad maybe you know just didn't expect it as much. And you know, Gr- you know, my, he's been Grundy's been working on his hands for a while, and he got the showcase it there, and he said it himself in the interview of the room. He's very happy about that victory, and you know, getting a TKO because a lot of people said, "Oh, because of his style of fighting, etc." Uh, for me, Grant here, he, if I'm Grant Dawson, I'm going to try and keep on the feet a bit as well. I'm going to like not look to go for the takedowns as much. I'm going to try and use this fight as a as a, as a fight on the feet. It's it's a, for me. I think it's an ideal fight for you. Yeah. Grant Dawson to kind of work his striker a bit more, to get a bit more on a strike, because Nad's not known as a guy who's going to knock you clean out, Nad is the guy who's going to grab you, grapple you, get you to the ground and try and you know, wear you down, look at the Alex Enlund fight I'll always go back to that, because it was a tremendous battle but, you know, that was a, that was a great bout obviously Nad's trained at Team Alpha Male and 
absolute savages there and he's got obviously he's got very good grapple on himself good solid cardio he's tough nosed uh, but I'm, I'm going to go with Grant on this one because I just think I think on the feet Grant might be able to start just catching Nad a bit to then open the takedowns a bit more and I think that's what Grant might do in this fight I think he might look to kind of open for the takedowns in the latter part of the rounds to, to win them you know just to secure the round get on top for a bit uh, and I'm sure Nad will be able to get back up but I just think to secure the points for the round that's something Nad might look at uh, sorry Grant might do here so I'm going to go with like a decision win for Grant because um, I think Nad's solid on the ground if he for sub, to submission defence even as well because even Alex Enland had a tough time against him and Alex Enland had his back and all sorts didn't he from, from, mm -hmm. from memory and that was a great fight so do check that out folks Cage Warriors fight uh, featherweight title brilliant one Nad Naramani against Alex Enland do check that out but yeah I want Grant Dawson so moving on, uh, Kadis Ibragimov uh, against the newcomer uh, Roman Delizzi. Uh How do you see that one going? Yeah, Kadis is the guy who came in when he hits you and he just throws everything out of his tank and then he just gasses and then he had nothing left and lost it. <laughs> like that will stick with you like glue. And then he had to fight Herman, Ed Herman, and just couldn't couldn't beat Ed Herman. Like. I don't when he when he, when he couldn't beat Ed Herman. Like don't get me wrong, I don't think Ed Herman's a bad fighter. Don't get me wrong, he's a, a veteran. He's very smart, but you got a thirty-nine-year-old Ed Herman in front of you. He's there to be beaten. He's there to be outworked, outstruck. Ed Herman's got no footwork. He's not quick on his feet. He just plods. And actually, if you watch Ed Herman's footwork, people, it's one of the things you do. What he does is what you get told not to do with footwork. He crosses his feet over when he moves. It's one of the worst things to do because you're open to, like, kicks and everything there. There's so much there that opens up. And he just couldn't... He didn't have an answer against Ed. And when that happened, I kind of went, uh, I'm fading on this dude, whoever he fights, and he's fighting a guy in Roman who... When I went to look at this Roman kid, man, he is quick to go for submissions. Like, Roman likes to get... Heel hooks, all sorts. He's got good submission game, but he starts it in his career. If you watch it, I'll tell you what, well, I don't know if you've seen it. There's a great little video out of someone's actually done it, put together all his fights the lead up to the UFC. They've done like the road to the UFC of all his fights. Now, it's not the full videos of all his fights, it's like a couple of minutes of each one of them. But what you got to see in there was actually you can visually see the progression on a little bit of lack of confidence in the start of, the pro of his career on the feet. Wanted to get a fight to the ground, go for the submissions. That's what he did, and he got it. But then you look later on, the guy's hands speed up a bit more. He's a bit more fluid with the striking, and he's got power in his hands. He slept, dudes. I'm going to go with Roman here. I think that Cadiz is going to try and stand and strike. I think Roman can get the fight to the ground, and when he gets the fight to the ground, he's got a nice little submission game on him. Um, and plus, I just can't trust Cadiz. I think he's got no fight IQ. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, Roman here to get either a submission or a, a TKO or something. <laughs> yeah, any like you said, it any chance to kind of maybe fade Kadisa bring him over is maybe something you need to look at pretty pretty closely. Like I said, I've not seen anything in Roman Delizzi except for the fact that he's coming out of Georgia. And you know those guys coming out of Georgia are kind of they're, they're kind of their heads down and bowling forward trying to kind of relate out what he like Mirab and Armin Sarukian I think was born in Georgia off the top of my head so um, yeah like I said I'm looking forward to kind of looking at Delizzi but I mean any chance you get I, I could not believe that Bragamov I thought obviously that first fight against Dallin Jung he came out there put him against the cage and just started swinging you've got like come on you're at the highest level here you cannot What other guy, whenever that may be, I mean, come on, it's so that's 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 not a good look. Like I say, I'll look into it. I'm going to lead the uh, lean the lead, say, for the simple reason I don't want to pick a Bramble because I think you said it bad fight IQ. So, yeah, I'll take the lead table because I'm looking forward to kind of looking into that. Your signal's uh, gone a bit broken there, bro. Just give your heads up. Um, oh. Yeah, you're a bit distorted. Are you downloading illegal movies again? No. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, moving on, main card. This guy might actually be fighting for the belt if everything. Who knows what's going on with the main event oh, with David yeah. Benavides? But this is a really good fight in itself. You've got Askar Askarov facing Alexandra Pantoja. Um, 
really good fight and one that interests me. But when I look at it, I'm, I've watched a, a couple of fights this afternoon in this one. Um, I, I've always been a bit of a stickler for, for Pantoja. I think he's a very dangerous guy. I think he's a very game fighter in pretty much all of his fights there. And it's something that you've just... I, I love watching his fights. Even the, the Neil Seary one in Glasgow, I was like, I was really engrossed in that fight with yeah. Pantoja because he, he was learning heavy leg kicks and he was picking the best guy in the division at points in time like Dustin Ortiz I know he lost that one he got taken down loads in that fight but then he, he rebounded and a great win against uh, Moreno uh, really used his like definitive strike in there and really mixed up with good low kicks and just really kind of put it on Moreno and then he got a couple of wins against a couple of guys not in the UFC anymore and Sasaki and um, Wilson Hayes knocked him out with a beautiful one punch uh, not a one punch knockout but just a beautiful yeah, dropped him. with a punch. Yeah, he caught him right on there. Then he had Davidson, which um, all in all, he's probably the champion of the division at the, at the minute. There, fought close, but the, you could see the power and the the harder landing shots were landing on Davidson's side, and he was hurting him with the strikes that he was landing. But Pantoja, being the game guy that he is, just keeps on coming, and then he rebounds and. and Great fashion against Matt Schnell. And then you've got someone like Askarov here who I've been, I think he's had some fun fights in the UFC to start off, to be honest yeah. with you. The one against uh, Tim Elliott was kind of back and forward. I thought his striking looked as good as it ever has. The Moreno fight, I thought, was very close. I thought his striking looked all right in that one, got some takedowns. If that's not in Mexico, I don't think he, he draws that fight. I think he wins it. But I think as a as a right now, I think Pantoja is just more well rounded and tougher and, and harder on the spot. So I, I'll take Pantoja for the win in that one. Yeah, I, I was a bit. I love the fight. I love the matchup. I think it's two top top flyweights fighting each other. Um, Askarov, he's just getting his groove into the flyweight division. I think Pantoja is a little bit. I think it's a little bit early for me to have. I thought if I'm going to build Askarov as a I would build him anyway in the flight division. I would have given him like a couple of guys outside of this before this fight. Um, but this is almost like a number one contender spot, isn't it, really? Pantoja and Askarov. If, one, if the main event goes ahead, that is. Um, the winner of this one probably probably in line for a title shot, you'd imagine. Uh, but Pantoja, yeah, he's very calm, good on the feet. The Moreno fight was a good example. Uh, really picked the shots well. Landed well against Moreno, but he didn't. He didn't overexert himself. He landed, and when he landed well, he didn't keep just going. Do you know how you see a lot of fighters where they'll try to throw like they land a good shot and then they just unload everything, and then it ends up like a clinch because they get too close to the fire. He was just nice and patient. Um, Askarov, for me though, he's shown as well from his side of things. He's good with uh, outside when he breaks from the clinch. He's good at strikes there. He's also got the grappling aspect, which. Pantoja's just got to look out for. If he can keep it feet on the feet, Pantoja should win the hands, the power. We have saw Askarov obviously hurt, like T Tim Elliott and stuff like that on the feet. And um, I I'm, I'm kind of favouring Pantoja as well. I just think he's got a little bit more, especially experience anyway. Uh, but, man, I think it's going to be a tight, tight fight. I would not be shocked if we saw a split decision as well. I would not be shocked at all. I think it's going to be a super tight fight, this one. I think maybe like a 2-1 for Pantoja, but man, it's hard to call it, man. Because I think Askarov's got parts of his fight game, which if he can implement, can cause Pantoja problems. Uh, but I'm going to go with Pantoja 29-28 kind of victory. Moving on, we've got Ariana Lipsky against Luana Carolina. Go. Oh, Luana Carolina, yeah, she's, uh, I think Lipsky should eat her up for breakfast. I think after Lipsky got her first win, she's kind of got the monkey off her back, because Lipsky came into the UFC with pretty much the world going, yeah, she's going to be an absolute superstar, she's going to go and smash out the park, everyone was up on it, we were high on it, and she flopped, absolutely flopped like a 70-year-old man's ding-dong. She just didn't have anything to show, and we were like, what is going on here? Have we just like been, we've been fluffed here by KSW, what is going on? She's finally got a group, got a win, and I think she should eat someone like Luana Carolina up. Like Luana just, she hasn't got the greatest head movement, not the best striking. I just don't have much in this girl. I don't, she leans back when she's 
when someone's coming at her as well. I think Lipsky's got far more technical striking. She's got the better footwork. I think if I'm Lipsky, I can be able to kind of coerce Luana to the cage to then just unload and pick off on her and keep her against the cage. Uh, yeah, mate, I just think it's a cut and throw. It should be a Lipsky win, and you can try to get Lipsky going again with the momentum and get a win in a couple of few, few more fights because she is so marketable for Europe. I hope they can. Mm. <laughs> I've got no confidence in Lipsky in this spot either. I think her UFC tenure has been not good at no. all. I thought she got blew up big time against Jojo and I think Molly McCann fought a great fight time takedowns well there and, and just dominate position but also struck her and then the the De, De Pradio win I mean I, I don't even think she looked that great now and I think she outstruck her but she's shown that this girl is not making any improvement in her takedowns and I'm not saying that Carlina's going to be the type of girl that's going to come out here and just run for takedowns I don't think she's that type of fighter She's longer than what uh, Lipsky is, so she might use that to her advantage. Um, but wow, this is this is as low level as I think you get. They should be trying to maybe make fights that let. <clears throat> oh, you're breaking up again, bro. Bro. Um, you said Lipsky. Know? You said Lipsky something, and yeah. it just kind of broke off. Sorry, bro. Yeah. Say so Lipsky's the kind of person that they, they can kind of market in certain parts in Europe. So if they were to go back to Poland, mm. she might kind of have a little bit of um, kind of fanfare over there, maybe in Brazil or whatever it is. But like I said, I'm not confident at all in this fight. Um, I'll take Lipsky, but I'm, I'm going to watch some of the, the, the fights back and see where I go with that. But I'll, I'll lean Lipsky, but obviously, honestly, I think that probably Carlina probably is very, very live in that spot as well. Mark Diakese against Rafael Fezayev's up next. Um, whew, that's a that's a tough fight. Um, I actually think I I like the Akiza. I think he's got a lot of really good parts of his skill set. But I think the fight that kind of just jumps back to me here is um, the Hat Paras fight, where he was against a, a really good fast fluid striker. And what Fizzyev is is he's a fast fluid striker. So if the Akiza, I thought I didn't think he fought a great game plan in that one. There, I thought that. Um, he kind of stood in the pocket and got dinged a little bit too many times against um, Hatprast. Mm-hmm. Now he's got a guy who I think his main skill set is to stand up. So he has to really be super, super careful. Obviously you can, with someone like Diakese, with the, the skills that he possesses, he could hurt someone like Fizyev because Fizyev we've seen against Mustafaev. He got hurt in that fight there and taken out. But since that Hatprast fight, I actually really like the fact that Diakese is like that fuck American top team I'm just going to stay at home I'm going to stay close I'm going to go to my local gyms and he's looked like an absolute killer in his last two fights completely drilled Joe Duffy into oblivion in that fight and then in the Venata fight was just too crisp too technical mixed in takedowns just for a beautiful beautiful fight but like I say I I think Fizzyev could be live in this one and I didn't think that when I was watching some fights um, I know he rebounded with that win over Alex White, and that's not a super high-level win. I'm going to lean Mark Diakese, but I think that Fezzev could be live in this spot. Uh, but I love what I've seen from Diakese's last two fights. If he, if he keeps that up here, I think he wins. But if he drops a level in this one here, maybe Fezzev catches him with it with his really superior, good superior striking too. But I'll take Diakese for the win. Yeah, I'm with you on the, the physio of being live, and I'm actually swaying towards him a little bit because I think he's, I think he is live, and I think the reason for it is styles, like you said, well, the, the just the kind of things, the hapras and the the um, close fight, I thought guys who are just pressure guys, forward think, forward aggressive guys can be a problem for Mark Diakese. I thought Fiziev can do that with the strike, and he's. He, he likes to be on the foot front, thrown punches, thrown kicks. Combination-wise, he is like a really t- tight technical striker. Um, and I think he can cause Diakese a bit of problems, putting him on putting him on the back foot rather than Diakese being on the front foot where he likes to be. Like the Joe Duffy fight, like we said, he absolutely tore Joe Duffy apart. But Joe Duffy was just so heavy on that front foot, he just did not come back with it. Uh, be an ape, a, a, a different plan. He just kept doing the same thing. Um, and the way the cameras just 
pause there. Will you look like a blow up sex doll? It was perfect. That mate, when you're ho holding <laughs> on the owners, we'll keep that in there. Um, on sale now. Get your Will dolls. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with uh, Raphael, mate. I'm gonna go with. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, I think he's got the striking capability to kind of cause DK's problems, but I mean, I'm, I reckon it might be a split to someone, because this could be a great fight, as in a fight of the night, because I think the pair of them could pop, I think the pair of them have got good striking. We've got a potential cracking war here. Mm. Yeah, like I say, just when I see Fizzy, I just think that mm. he's a very high-level striker, and I think yeah. that someone like DKZ... I don't think he's going to get away with throwing single shots against this guy. He's going to have to use combinations. And he could use his wrestling. Mm. I'm just not... I don't know. Uh, he's out, he's out uh, to Tiger Muay Thai, is it, I think it is? Or yeah, is it? yeah he's, he's a trainer there. So yeah. well, I think that could be close. I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of looking into that a little bit more and seeing uh, if I can get a defi de decisive sorry, spot in, the, in that fight there. But um, moving on... Co-main event, a really good co-main event as well. Jack Hermanson against Kelvin Gastelum. Who have you got? This is a great fight. This is like the kind of fight Jack Hermanson needed to get the opportunity to throw his name in the kind of elite of the middleweight division, like kind of getting a kind of, I want to say, title talks because Kelvin's that guy who's just kind of come up to the well, to, well from welterweight to middleweight and just, he's been, he, Kelvin's just been stuck in that top five for, for a while now. He's, you know he does the job well. He obviously Kelvin lost a fight to. I, I was a, he lost a split to Darren Till, didn't he? Off the top of my head, mm -hmm. I don't know how. I don't. I think Till won that. Clear as day. I don't know. I don't know where the split came from. I thought Till fought a very smart fight in that in that bout as well. But um, one thing you get with Kelvin is doesn't give up. He's got a solid chin. He will go and fight. He will fight for your money, Jack Hermanson. On the feet, I think Kelvin has got the better striking than Jack Amanson. I think technically he's got a crisper clean of striking, better combinations. We've seen, though, that Jack Amanson's got a good bit of pop, and when he gets to the ground, this is the, Jack Amanson has got one of the best ground and pounds in the game. Uh, if Jack can get the fight to the ground, that is, I think Kelvin's hard to get down, as much as Kelvin's actually not too bad at getting folks down on their back. Uh, I think Jack amanson has got nice... Nice power on his feet, good hands, but I think he's just not as quick as Kelvin. I think Kelvin's got a speed advantage here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of favouring and leaning towards Kelvin here on this one. I wish Jack Manson was fighting Chris Weidman. Uh, not Chris Weidman, sorry. Who was that I was thinking? There was, a middle, there was a middleweight I was thinking I wanted to fight, but not Kelvin. I can't remember who it was now. I was thinking about the other day when I was watching the tapes. But I think Jack Manson here in this fight, you know, he could... Oh, I think it was Chris Weidman. Yeah, it was Chris Weidman because he got cancelled, didn't it? Um, and who's Chris got now? Chris got a fight made for him, didn't he? Down back down the middleweight. Akhmadov. That was it. So that's how far Chris Wyman's dropped down in his career. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, you know, look. I know we've got Jared Cannon here. Literally throws cannon. So Jack Manson losing that fight is what it is. But I think that I think uh, I'm going to go with Calvin Gaston here. I think he, he can get the victory on this one over Jack Manson. I think he could possibly. Maybe stop him, but maybe oh, just outstrike him and get the get the decision win. Mm. Yeah, if I'm Jack Hamanton, I'd be absolutely chomping at the bit for Chris Weidman, if I'm being honest with you. I think that's a fight that, that they were matched up in. If I was him, I'd be just trying to get that rematch because I think that's a, a big win over a name guy who's won a belt in the UFC. And now you've got a really tough fight in Kelvin Gastelum who's coming off two wins. And it was only two fights ago that he was fighting close. He was going into that fifth round against Izzy Adesanya where he could have, if he had a better round and not get caught with some shots, he might have the belt right now. So it's like, uh, he is a very high-level guy, no matter what division he's at, welterweight uh, or middleweight. A very, very hard guy to face who has got really good boxing, big power, got wrestling himself. I'm just looking at this here and I'm thinking, where has Jack got a really definitive advantage? Obviously, if he gets the fight to the ground and gets into a, a position where he's known to have absolutely electric ground and pound, um, but on the feet, you seen against Cannon the other. If if you stand your ground, stop get getting taken down. That Jack maybe doesn't have many options on the feet, and you can knock him out. And that's kind of where I'm kind of going with this one. I think that Gaslam's not going to be easy to take down. I think he's not going to be. I don't. I don't think he's going to accept being clinched up against the cage. I think he knows that he's on a two fight skid here, 
and that he needs to kind of rebound big time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kelvin Gaston. I thought that fight with Till could have really went either way. If I'm being honest with you, I thought that Till kind of landed the more precise shots, but it was it was super super close. There wasn't much in it. Um, so I'm gonna take Kelvin Gaston. I just think he he might shut down some of the the best things that Jack kind of brings to the table. So I'm gonna take Kelvin Gaston probably via TKO. Actually, I think at once he kind of stops Jack from really getting his his game plan off. I think he can maybe maybe knock him out with his boxing or, um, or something like that. So I'll take Kelvin Gaston for the win there. And in the main event, who knows if we get this main event, I think from what I hear, Davison is flying to Abu Dhabi um, at night time in Las Vegas. So they're what, 4 a.m., 4 p.m., sorry, in Vegas right about now. So I hear he's flying out there. But this is a rematch. Davison Figueredo against Joseph Benavides for the vacant UFC flyweight championship. Uh, and we're all seeing how that fight kind of ended the first way around. It was a kind of clash of heads, which, to be fair, Benavidez is really bad for coming in head first. So it's on him for what happened in that one there. Yeah. And then, then you've got someone in like Figueroa. If you give him the slightest opportunity, the guy smells that blood in the water, he's going to take you out. And that's really what kind of happened in that fight there, where the larger shots, the bigger shots were landing for Davis, uh, Davison. He missed weight in that fight, didn't he? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah the, the figure out is like yeah. 127 something he came in at, something yeah. like 127.2. Yeah, that is a bad look, obviously, in the company's mind if you're doing that. And then, I mean, he might have another tough weight cut here because if he's flying out to, to Abu Dhabi on a Sunday night, he's going to have to quarantine for a couple of days. That's going to be Wednesday. So mm-hmm. he's not going to have that much time to really get in there and, and, and cut the weight and. Um, it's going to be a, a kind of tough week for Figueredo but he's a hard guy in that division to, to be matched up against because he brings a lot of power um, a guy who stands his ground can take a shot as well and really was starting to land some big shots in that fight and they really got to Benavidez in, in, in that kind of second round but like I say where that fight all down to Benavidez comes in head um yeah, I, I don't know. I would love to see Joseph Benavidez win because I think that it would just be a great cap in his career. But I think Figueiredo is just the number one guy in that division at the minute. So uh, I've got Davidson Figueiredo. The longest fight goes on. I think there's more chance of him landing a kill shot. Um, and that's how I kind of see this fight going. So I'll maybe go a third, fourth round victory for uh, Davidson Figueiredo. Yeah, I hope everything's okay. I hope he's COVID free. I hope nothing gets pulled. I hope we get the fight happening. And I hope he makes weight. Because um, I feel like Joseph Benavides will feel like he's been hard done by again with Figueroa missing weight. I think he just wants to have that legitimate shot at the title again. I've got to be honest, I'm not overly confident on Joseph winning because I think Figueiredo, after the last fight, he'll just have that mindset going, I know what to do. I know I can beat him now. I know how to beat him. Benavidez ain't going to change his style. He's not going to change the way he fights. He's been fighting that way for eons. Yeah. It's a muscle memory. You can't get rid of it. And Figueredo will know, right? I know that play. I know that shot is there. That timing is there. My power's not gone anywhere. I've not lost any power. And Benavidez, hey, look, it's going to be in his head. It's going to be in his mind. It, even though he missed weight by a couple of pounds, that doesn't change the result. It doesn't say, "Oh, well, if he'd made weight, I would have won." It wouldn't. It doesn't. That didn't make a difference. So Benavidez has got this mindset of he's going to be a bit more cautious in the fight as well. I think. I think he might be a little bit cautious in pulling the trigger. I think he might try to do a points battle rather than a, try to fight to win the. I think he might be a bit cautious in the engaging the strikes. And for me, if I'm Figueredo, I'd go, cool, I've got 25 minutes to land a powerful shot on you. That's, that's all you got to think of you, Figueredo. Just got to land that one, one, that one shot and it'll change the fight round. I'm going Figueredo. I think you might get a stoppage against Bonavidez again. Um, I think you could definitely get a stoppage, in fact. I don't see why he couldn't win this belt again. And You know, you get Pantoja if he wins. You got your next matchup. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... That's our picks there for Davis and Figueiredo against Joseph Benavides. The card there, like I say, it's not one on my side. I've looked into yeah. a hell of a lot outside a couple of fights. So, like I say, with with that, when I do manage to kind of look into it a little bit more, I'll, I'll leave a comment in the drop-down box with my official predictions. But I'll probably end up sticking with mo- most of the stuff I went with there. So, kind of moving into the betting side there, I have two bets for this card already. 
Well, under door plays kind of big on Grant Dawson at minus two, uh, plus two twenty-five, and I've also got money on uh, Brett Johns to beat Montel Jackson at plus two twenty-five. So two sizable underdogs there, which but I think they've got path to victories. Um, but both against tough, uh, tough top opposition. So, um, if I can just get one of them to come through, it'd be a nice kind of look into that there. Um, looking at the other betting odds for that card, uh, I think there'll be. I think some people will be in Jack Hermanson. He's plus one ten. Mm. Anytime you see Jack with plus money beside his name, I think he, that's a little bit enticing. Like I said, the Dia Casey one is interesting to me because I can see that line coming down. Feziev is a plus 140 dog, but I think he's got a path to victory as well. But Diakese, to me, he's just looked so good in his last couple of fights. If he keeps that up, I think he beats someone like Feziev. But I think there's maybe a little bit of value in Feziev in a close, good, stylistic matchup for him. Um, then I'm kind of looking down. Sarukian's minus 210. I don't think I really want to play that against a dangerous guy in Davi Hamos. Joe Duffy's minus 365, so he's a big favourite. Uh, I don't think I like that that much either. That doesn't really uh, kind of appeal to me. Um, uh, but what was that fight? Uh, Joe Duffy, uh, minus three, minus three sixty five. Don't like the fact that mm. he's kind of asking mm. for. Like, he was talking about retirement and. Mm. And all that, I don't really like that at all. So, what's um, Amir Albazi and um, Malcolm Gordon? Uh, there is no lines for that yet. There's ah, nothing, okay. nothing up yet. But uh, I mean, the Lipsky one is minus one ten a piece. If you want to put money in low level women's MMA, uh, Pantoja's minus one eighty five. If that came down a little bit, I'd maybe be a bit more interested. So, so yeah. A kind of quick look into the betting lines there. There's nothing really set in stone that I'm looking at outside the two dog plays that I've made uh, for that one. So that's us done for this fight card. We've did two in one night. It's been a long couple of hours trying to remember all these guys here and looking into things. And then we're on the last fight card for UFC Fight Island. And it's a great, I think it's another great main event. I think there's 14 fights in this card. You've got Robert Whitaker, the former middleweight champion against Darren Till in the main event. What a great main event. You've got mm-hmm. Shogun on that card. You've got uh, Cowboy Oliveira on that card. You've got the return of Gustafsson at heavyweight. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got a couple of newcomers. You've got like a, a really strong kind of European contingent now when you've got Paul Craig, Pani Kianza, Grundy, you've got Evloev, uh, you've got Ramzan Amiv, Jai Herbert, um, Nicholas Dalby, Tom Aspinall. So there's a lot, of, a lot of kind of familiar fighters for me and John in that spot there. So we're looking forward to kind of breaking that down. We'll be back next week. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and don't forget to to leave your comments, thoughts and opinions on the fights here. Until next week, guys, all the very best and enjoy the two fight cards we've got coming up here uh, within the next week. So all the very, very best and take care and we'll see you soon.